So if you have your, your, your Bibles, and we're going to teach today on the Father's love. You know, most people, they, 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 they love their moms, but they yearn for their father's approval. Have you ever seen a little boy or a little girl that, that you know, they, you know, it, it, it's like little boys, he'd be flipping all over the place. He'd be jumping up and shouting, saying, Daddy, see me. And little girl, she has a way of looking at you, saying, Daddy, I'm here. I was telling somebody, I said, you know, Bridget's is 35, and still to this day, there are moments when she'll come sit on my lap. Still, she could look at me a certain way, and uh, whatever it is, I'm in there with you, girl. You know, it's something about watching your sons. See, my sons, they come in, and uh, I, I watch them try to do things that I do, from trying to grow beards, to, you know, and then get in front of me, my beard is thicker than yours. So what? I wasn't in the competition anyway. <laughs> to stealing my shoes and socks and, you know, my Afro comb. And my wife said, I don't know why you, why you need it anyway. Well, it's to comb my beard, not my hair. <laughs> you know, so, but, but it's something when, when, when you watch your children try to emulate you. And it's something when my daughter says that, you know, I, I had one guy that uh, my daughter was dating, and he came by the house. He said, Mr. Leo, you a hard act to follow. I said, what you mean? He said, we went to the movies, and uh, I got out the car. And I realized after I had started walking that Bridget wasn't with me. <laughs> and I looked back, and she was sitting in the seat waiting on me to open the door. And she did that because she said she has seen you do that for her mother the whole time they've been married. Well, I said, oh, yeah, that was intentional. You can't be a rascal and put a ring on her finger. But what about our relationship with God? See, sometimes the same way we try to get man's attention we feel as though we got to do the same thing we're trying to get God's attention. Jump through hoops. Roll on the floor. Sometimes have temper tantrums thinking, I know this is going to make him respond. But you're working hard to get something that he gave you without you paying a price. So if you have your Bibles, go ahead and hold your Bibles up. Let's do our confession. I just wanted to just kind of lay a foundation for you. So if you would, repeat after me. Say, this is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. I am a believer, not a doubter. I am a doer, not just a hearer. And my life is the better after having heard the word of faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Father, thank you for this moment to minister your word. Holy Spirit, I, I, I yield the right of way unto you. Use my vocal cords to speak to your people. I thank you that burdens will be removed and yokes will be destroyed. I thank you, Lord, that you have given me an anointing, God, to paint pictures in the minds of people to tell stories. So therefore, Father, I thank you in advance, God, that the story that I tell this morning concerning you being a great father, I thank you, God, that people will leave, God, with more confidence in your ability to make things happen in their lives. So, God, we give you praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to start the, the, the discussion off this morning. I know some of you are saying, well, you already started the discussion. No, that was just a warm-up. I, I was getting my engine reared up then. I'm about to tell a story now. And, and, and the story comes from uh, uh, the, the story about the prodigal son, or the, they call it the parable of the lost son. And, and this parable is found in the 15th chapter of Luke. And here it is, God will, the, the young man, he wakes up, it's the story of two brothers, and the younger brother wakes up one day, and all of a sudden, he goes to his father, who is 
doesn't appear to be sick or ill, and he asks his father for his inheritance. Now, if you know anything about inheritances, you normally get those when people die. But he said, Father, can I have my inheritance before you die? And the father granted him his wish. As a matter of fact, he brought the two sons in and gave both of them half of his wealth. And the next morning, the younger son who had gotten his inheritance, he packed up his stuff and he left. He went on a journey. He went into the town and he began to, to, to live loose, you know, wasting all of it. You know how if you, you can have enough money to where you could walk in a spot and everybody like you. I'm sure that was his story. He walked into town and they saw he was loaded. And all of a sudden you had friends that wasn't friends. You, I'm talking about everybody was around you. And, and they hung around long enough for you to spend it all, to waste all of your wealth. And right when you, he wasted all of his wealth, a famine hit. So here it is, I done took all my money. First of all, I should not have had this money right now anyway, but I talked my father and he agreed to it. I spent all my money. Then as soon as I get broke, here comes a famine. And now I hit an all-time low to where I take a job feeding pigs. And, and, and I'm so low to where the food that the farmer gave me to give the pigs, it starts to look good to me. But if we start right here at Luke, the 15th chapter, at the 17th verse, it says, when he finally came to his senses, he said to himself, at home, even the hired servants have food enough to spare, and here I am dying of hunger. I will go home to my father and say, Father, I have sinned against both heaven and you, and I am no longer worthy of being called your son. Please take me on as a hired servant. So he returned home to his father. And while he was still a long way off, his father, now understand the father's love. I want you to catch something here. So he returned home to his father, and while he was still a long way off, his father saw him coming. Here's the father. I don't know what he was doing, but he looked out and said, boy, there's my boy. And filled with love and compassion, talking about the father, he ran to his son. He didn't wait for the son to run to him. He saw his son, and he took off running because of the love and compassion that he had, and he embraced his son and kissed him. He embraced his son. His son said to him, Father, I have sinned against both heaven and you, the same thing he had said he was going to do, and I am no longer worthy of being called your son. But Here's the love of a father. But this father said to the, to the servants, quick, bring the finest robe in the house and put it on him. Get a ring for his finger. The ring, anytime you show the ring, the ring is a symbol of you representing a certain family. And sandals for his feet. And kill the calf we have been fattening. We must celebrate with a feast, for this son of mine was dead and has now returned to life. He was lost, but now he is found. So the party began. So the party began. Here it is. You done went out, and, and, and a good father, like God, a good father will look past your bad decisions. See, it's not uncommon for a mom to do that. You know, you know, moms, mom, mom, mom being to fight. You know, whatever, whatever going on with her baby is a good mother. She, I, very few mothers I've ever seen give up on their children. I, I'm talking about carrying them in a certain way. But then you have a good father. A good father. A lot of time, the, the conversation is about how loving a father is, because our love is expressed differently from the woman. Sometimes I would love is to get you back in the fight so that you can still win. So I might not come up to you and pat your boo-boo. I say, ignore the boo-boo, get up, and let's go to work. Because guess what? Life is going to require something of you. Some, you but you can never put a child in a position to where 
When life get hard, they don't feel as though they could ever come home. This father had done something right because when I look at the father, I, I, was, I, I was concerned. I said, well, where was the mother? It never talked to the mom here. So maybe the mom had died or something happened where the mother wasn't there. Maybe he was a single father, a single parent. So here it is, a boy goes out, and first of all, he don't waste all the money. Now, some of us would have, first thing we would have said, now look at you, coming up in here. You know the boy was stinking. When the father ran down the road to meet him, understand he left from the hog pen. And he said he came to his senses in the hog pen. So he got up out of the hog pen hungry and stinking, and he went home. So the father, filled with love and compassion, took off running to meet his child. He didn't stop when he got close, when he really saw the condition of the child. He didn't stop and say, oh, God, what happened to you? Well, look at you. Go take a bath first, then I'll hug you. But instead, he ran up on his child, he embraced his child, and he loved his child. How bad did the child need what the father gave? See, sometimes when I'm at my lowest state, I don't need you to tell me that you see my lowest state. I know where I, don't you think that boy knew he had been in the hog pen? Don't you think he knew he was broke? And he had made bad decisions with money. Don't you think when he walked up, if he was hungry, the Bible said that he was hungry. Don't you think he had lost a little weight? Don't you think he looked different when he returned home than he did before he left? But a father's love. Don't care anything about that. Guess what the father started doing? The father started restoring him right there on the spot. They didn't make it to the house before the father started restoring him. The father saw his condition. He said, hey, clothes don't look good. Go get me a, the finest robe in the house. Bring it for my son. He don't feel as though he's still a part of this family. He feels like he's a servant. Well, go bring me one of those rings that symbolize his, his right as a member of this doggone family. Go ahead and get that for me. And, and say, now, his feet look kind of bad. Bring me some sandals. And he done lost weight. So I need, don't go get her any calf. I want you to get that one. We were saving for a special occasion. And I want you to put that one on the grill for him. So, so here it is. He's being stored by a good father. And, and then says, now, what we're going to do to show you that I don't, I don't care about what really happened. I don't care about you having gone off and blown it. Now let's have a party because the celebration is my son was lost. Don't mean that I, I didn't know where he was. Don't mean that I couldn't find him. He was lost in his mind because he thought that the things of the world were better than what he had at home. Have you ever took off running somewhere and found out when you got there you didn't want to be there? Have you ever stepped into a place, you, 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 you got out the window while mama and daddy was sleeping, sneaking out the house to go down there, and then when you got there you found out, boy, I should have stayed home. Have you ever pursued something and in and, and, and your pursuit you found out that you already had what you needed and, and it cost you more to go where you thought you wanted to be than if you'd have stayed home? Have you ever just needed someone to wrap their arms around you and kiss you and ignore your bad decisions? Some of you might be so perfect with <clears throat> you. Up. I've needed a hug. I've needed someone to become blind to my foolishness. No, no, no. Let me get back in the house, then we'll talk about what I did. Look, I'm sure the father, after he got his son restored back to a better place, they sat down, held a conversation, and, and, and just to make sure that there was a lesson learned from it. But the worst thing he could have did is when the son pulled up, was on his way home, the, first, the worst thing he could have did was before he loved him, identified his problems. Sometimes you've got to have a blind eye when you look at people because, see, it's love that's going to restore, not you becoming a critic. It, it, it's love that 
that, that will take a broken person and if you know how to put them back together like that father, see, you got to be looking to see what they need. Well, you don't need me to tell you this. Right now, you need a good meal. Feed me first, and then if you want to hold a conversation, we can talk. But right now, my belly is growl, growling so loud to where you can talk. I can't hear nothing you're saying. At least let me get a bath. You know, you, you, I just came from the pigs. I know I smell bad. So if you just let me get a bath and uh, put me in the servant's quarter, whatever you want to do, but just don't put no more pressure on me right now. I just left pressure. The reason why I'm trying to get me a script together before I get home is because I feel like you're going to be mad anyway. That's why the boys start saying, well, when I get home, you know how you done did when you, get, you done messed up? On your way home, you figured it out. Man, when I get home, I'm going to tell mama this right here, and I'm going to say this right here, and I'm, I mean, you know, you know, ooh, ooh, and hopefully mama will bite off on this thing here. And then when you walk in the house, God already done spoke to mama. She already know your business. So really, your little script really didn't mean nothing. <laughs> you know how the mamas are. They know everything. But see, and sometimes they underestimate the daddies like God don't talk to daddies, see. Yeah, yeah, we hear from God, too. We just have a little mercy on you because we know mama going to deal with you. <laughs> but then if we come down here to verse 28, there's another member of the family. Verse 28, I'm skipping down to verse 28. Say, the older brother was angry and wouldn't go in to the party. God Almighty, have you ever had... It seemed like the older brother would have been excited. It's a sad day if he is. I, I, I'd have been out and, and the world on drugs. I had my, 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 my tail handed to me by the world. I'm losing and I'm been out there on drugs and, and homeless and, and, and spent all my money and living in the hall pen. And then finally I come to my senses and I come home and the very people that should have celebrated me. Mad because God done delivered me. You got to be kidding me. That was the oldest brother. He hot, probably because he done had to carry the weight of the family while you been out spending money. Thinking you having a good time but not really knowing your story. Because you wasn't there working like him. He thought you had it better than he was not knowing you done been drugged through the ringer. So I'm glad the older brother wasn't the one that had to make the decision. I'm glad that a loving father was in place to where he could celebrate him because, see, the older brother would have ran him right back out to where he came from. Yeah, he'd have been saying, well, you got what you deserve. I'm around here working hard like this here. You know how it is when you have them family meetings. I used to hate them. Because there are some members of the family that ain't going to work. Yeah, they ain't going to, I don't care. I'm in the family, I gather you. They're going to come sit down. They're going to wait till the last minute to come. And then when they come, they go straight to the food. And I used to be in there. I'm talking about Steve coming from my house, look like Don King. I'm talking about you got to be kidding me. You got to be kidding me that Andre can't. Oh. Not, not Andre. Not, it was another one. Oh. But you know that you, you, you have to be mindful of this stuff. Because the, the, the importance of the Father's love, the Father's love that God shows us is really how we should love each other. Do you understand that when you were filthy and nasty and stinking and unlovable and you came to God, God didn't wait for you to fix your problem. He received you just like you were and then began to do a work on you. It's called renewing your mind. Yeah, but sometimes we act as though we didn't send up awful aromas to God. You know, the Bible says that our sin is a stench unto the nostrils of God. Well, well, some of us have sent our foul odors to the nostrils of God, but we forget and act like we did not. And because he didn't remind us of our shortcomings and our problems. But a good father, he loves us. You know, a lot of times I, I pick on my family members, but you know what? Now, the truth be told, God gave me a wonderful family. My brothers and my sisters, my family, man, I love my family. I could just talk about them and they can't get mad at me and they don't talk to me no more. Because they know sometimes I'll put them on the spot, but it don't mean that it's true. You know, uh, no, my family, they show up. We just showed up in different ways. Some brought money. Some brought help. You know, some brought stuff. You know, but we showed up. We brought what we brought to the table. Uh, and, 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 and without any of us doing what we did, whatever we were doing would not have taken place. You know, and we had, we, we had a chief that made sure everything went right. 
But when you start looking at what God would do for you, you got to start understanding that the reason why God loved you based on what John 3.16 says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Here it is, when you look at a good father, a good father is willing to make sacrifices. You can't say that you're a good father if you're not willing to give up something. Here it is, the father God said, you know what, in order to get mankind back in the place that they're supposed to be, I got to make a sacrifice. So he sent Jesus. Watch the, his, his only begotten son, watch his son go through all this stuff just for you and I so that we would be granted eternal life. So I would encourage fathers, you can't make decisions based on what's best for you. Your why has to be bigger than your own life. You've got to be willing to go out and do things that's uncomfortable when it comes to your family. Your children need to know that you love them. Your wife needs to know that she can trust you. Yeah. Make sacrifice. Because, and I say make sacrifice, and some things should come natural, but if you haven't been trained a certain way, it is a sacrifice until you learn how to do it. And then we have Matthew, the 18th chapter, 12th through the 14th verse. It says, what do you think? Of, if a man has a hundred sheep and one of, those, one of them goes astray, does he not leave the 99 and go to the mountains to seek the one that is straying? And if he should find it, or surely I say to you, he rejoices more over that sheep than over the 99 that did not go astray. Even so, it is not the will of your Father who is in heaven that one of these little ones should perish. So now what this scripture here says that here it is, God would leave the 99 to come get you. When you was out there in your mess, you know what God did? God came and rescued you. Some of you were in all kind of craziness. Some of you were, you, you knew you were right in the thick of sin when God came. And all of a sudden, how do you be in a club and all of a sudden you start thinking about Jesus? How can you be in a crazy relationship where you know you shouldn't be in it? And all of a sudden, right there, you start hearing the, God wooing you. He's calling you. Come on now. I got something better for you. Come on, come on. Have, have you ever been in a situation where, where you knew you were wrong and, and God stepped right into the, your situation? He didn't wait for you to leave. There have been some that was right in the middle of drinking alcohol. I'm talking about drunk, and all of a sudden, God blew you high. I, ooh, you better tell me something. He loved you just that much to where he left the 99 and he came and got you. You knew you was in an abusive relationship. And all of a sudden, God stepped in and said, there's somebody better for you. And all of a sudden, the thing that you loved at one time, now you lost the taste for it. How do you walk away from something that had you, had a stronghold on you? You didn't have the, wild, the, the, the willpower to do it on your own. God stepped in because of his love. Rescued you. You know you didn't have but two cans of pork and beans in the cabin. All of a sudden, he, somebody, and all of a sudden, somebody just left grocery on your door. What do you think? That's God showing up for you. It wasn't because of how good you were. It wasn't because you crossed your T's and dotted your I's. It was because he was, it was, he decided he was going to love you. And your behavior and my behavior did not determine that love. He loved you just because. He left the 99. And he came to rescue you. Matthew, the seventh chapter, and the ninth, and the ninth through the eleventh verse says, Or what man is there among you who is, who, if his son asks ask for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a serpent? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask him? If, if, if a human being can do good things for each other, how much more will God do? So a good father is a father who gives us good gifts. God give you good gifts. You know how you could think about I remember when I first became a Christian, I could think about something that would happen. Boy, he was warning me. Oh, he locked me in. Oh, I said, oh, if it's like this right here, I got to stay a Christian. I, I didn't know that it could be so good. Changed the way I thought about myself. All of a sudden, I'm walking around lying, telling people, well, you know, I had a learning disorder and a speech impediment. I said that for years until I started pastoring. 
That was my out because I didn't work hard. And then I tried to do that because that, that was my story. And I, I just stick my chest out when I said it, too, because by now I learned how to read. I stick my chest out. I said, you know, I, I had a learning disorder. And, and one day, I, right in the middle of that thing there, God came and rescued me. He said, stop saying that. You didn't have no learning disorder. You had a study problem. You didn't study, so you didn't know nothing. Nothing in, nothing out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you no, know, sometimes, and some of you, you think that you have problems that you don't have because you're not working hard. You think there's a problem that God is holding back on you. No, if you just come to your, if you come to like the young man, come to your senses and, and realize you much more than you have chosen to become. I just took a detour on you. Then life will get better for you. Life will treat you good because why? God has already came and rescued you. So now that you've been rescued, you've got to go through the process of getting your mind renewed. But he still gives us good gifts. If you know how to treat each other, just imagine how much more will God do for you? How, mu how much more? If, if you know don't take and give your child poison, then, then how much more will God do for you? So a good father is always looking for ways to make their children's lives better. Not always, I, I hate every time I be around people and they tell the children no. Oh, no. Always eat not the dollar menu. No. No, you need to understand what steak tastes like. Because if I draw a big enough picture for you, then when you get out on your own, you ain't going to be go hanging out at Burger King. You're going to go find the life that you were accustomed to. Man, we visit Bridget in Atlanta. I, I said, dear God, she lived pretty good up, up in here. <laughs> see, you can tell when you just go see. It's one thing. If I take you certain places, when I walk in, there, I ain't going to say, hey, Leo. Nobody ain't going to say, hey, Leo, because I don't go that much. But we were with her. She going to these expensive places. Hey, Bridget. I say, well, they got to know your name. That means you either tip good or you come here a bunch. <laughs> and I'm so glad it's not on my tab. But a good father. See, the good gifts is a training ground, too. See, and a lot of people don't understand that. When you're giving gifts, you are still in a training mode. You are creating an appetite for people, and you want to make sure that the appetite is way up here. So whenever they start thinking about considering cheating themselves by not working hard, they'll associate hard work and dedication with living their dream. You cannot live where I live and you don't know how to work hard. You cannot live and have what I have if you don't know how to work hard. So you, you can't. You're going to be eating bologna and peanut butter. You can't eat the filet menu. You see, you've got to create that. And a good father raises the bar. Matthew, the sixth chapter, eighth verse. Therefore, do not be like them, for your father knows the things you have need of before you ask. A good father is sensitive to the needs of his children. A good father is sensitive to the needs of his wife. A good father is, uh, is, you don't always have to tell a good father what you need. I could walk around my children, I could see certain things. Yeah, and, and, and a lot of times they don't even know it. When I see certain things, I go whisper in their mama ear. Take care of that right there, girl. Yeah, take these because we could either take care of it on the front end or we're going to take care of it on the back end. Take care of it on the front end and we're going to be okay. But a good father, a good father can look in your eyes and see that you're hurting. Yeah, no, man, what's going on with you? And that's not only a good biological father, a good pastor who was in the spiritual father status also. You know, we walking by me talking about I ask the question. Sometimes I ain't ask the question waiting for you to tell me. I'm asking you the question to just get information. I already see it. I, I see it all. I see the heaviness all over you. And the prayer is that God will. Reveal your secrets that can destroy you to us. See, many people perish in private when they should have invited somebody in to help them. And sometimes we're knocking on the door trying to get in, and you've got the door. you standing behind the door pulling on, I ain't letting you in. I, no, no. Let that, release the doorknob. Let us in because that's where help starts. You don't run. The only thing you're going to do, the devil pull you out and all of a sudden you get out there and you, th you thought you were running 
and, and you find yourself in a big mess. But a good father will know. There are things that you want. You know how you know how it is with children and family members. You know they come and you can see the twinkle in their eye. Here they, oh dear God, here they, here they come. And then they walk in the room. How you doing? Well, what does that mean right now? And you done walk past me about five, six times. Now you want to say, how, no, that means you're about to, you set me up. But because I'm sensitive to you, I know before you ask. And just because I know before you ask doesn't mean that I'm find, trying to find a way not to give it to you. A good father gets pleasure out of putting smiles on their children's face. A good father does. Father God gets pleasure out of putting smiles on your face. Do you know that it's okay for you to walk up to, get on your knees and talk to God or driving in your car and talk to God or walking down on a, on a street and talk to God and saying, you know what, Lord, I, I, I understand that, you know, the word, your word says that the I, I, only reason I don't have is because I haven't asked. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to master the ask. I'm a master stand in your presence. I'm a master loving on you. I'm a master being a good child because one thing I want to encourage you to be, and that is a good child, because it's easier for a good father to meet the needs of a good child. Sometimes when you're a disobedient child, you complicate it because some things that the good father want to get to you, you can't handle. You would squander it. <laughs> Verse 30, I'm going to go back up to verse 28. The older brother was angry. That's, I'm, still, I'm still at Luke, the 15th chapter, going back to verse 28. The older brother was angry and would, wouldn't go in. His father came and begged him, but he replied, all these years I've slaved for you and never once refused to do a single thing you told me to do. And in all that time, you never gave me even a young goat for a feast with my friends. Verse 30, yet when this son, I love how he said this, yet when this son, you know, that's when I'm mad. When this, this son, not my brother, yet when this son comes home, comes back after squandering your money on prostitutes, you celebrate by killing the fat calf. But this is where I'm going to close at. The father said in verse 31, his father said to him, look, dear son, you have always stayed by me and everything I have is yours. Look, dear son. Sometimes we are so concerned about what other people are getting and what I didn't get, and the whole time the father's saying, you watching somebody that done been out there, and you really don't know their story. You don't understand. They need what I'm giving to them right now. If, if, if I don't give them this type of love right now, they might not make it. And you are mad about that when really everything that you're mad about, you've had access to the whole time. That's for those of you that always stay in the church. You've been coming to church, and you've been serving, and you've been faithful to God, and, and, and you might see God work a miracle in the, life of some, in the life of someone who just walked through the doors. And if you're not careful, your heart begins to say, well, why not? The reason why it's not you is because you didn't ask. You didn't know what you had access to. So you got mad not knowing that you could went out there at any time and kill the, fat, fat, the fattening cow, calf and had a feast on your own. You didn't have to wait for your father. He has already given you permission. Say, whatever you need, all you got to do is ask, and I'll do it. All you got to do is just ask, and I, I got you. All you got to do is just trust me. Believe that I'll do it for you, and I'll do it. And the only reason you're not seeing what your brother's experiencing in your life is because you didn't understand the position that you held by still being in the house. For everything that you did, when you show up, there's things that are here waiting on you. You can, you, you can place a demand on the, the anointing of God, and God will show up. Why? Because he's a good, good father. He's a good, good father. Will you trust and believe in the good, good father? 
Because no matter what you've done, he loves you. No matter what you've gone through. The Bible says that the gifts and callings of God are without repentance. It means that, see, it ain't who you are, who you were created to be is not predicated on how good or bad you would be because God knew your end from your beginning. He knew all of your good decisions and bad decisions before you committed them. And he said, even after I know all of this about you, I still will not take the gifts and callings away from you. When you understand that there's something that God gave you to give to the planet, if you get busy giving it to the planet, everything that you need in life will begin to make its way into your life. Why? Because God has a plan for your life that he wants to make you look real, real good because he's a good, good father. So as we end this today, going forward, will you spend more time talking to the good, good father? Will you have the courage that the prodigal son had where you will Understand that, yeah, I might be in a rut, but you know what? I'm going home. He didn't wait to get clean. He didn't wait for life to come together. He didn't wait for his pride to, to, to get to a place. He said, you know, right now, based on my state, I'm going home. And whatever it takes when I get home, I'm willing to do. I'm, see, it's something when you mess up and you go back thinking that you're supposed to be put back in the high place. That, that's pride. But it's something when I know I've messed up and whatever it takes, I'll go to the lowest place and work my way back up as long as you let me back in. Will you humble yourself and come back home? Because when you do, Mr. Creator himself, the Father God himself, he's standing in the streets waiting on you. He see you coming and he won't wait for you to get to him. He'll meet you, wrap his arms around you, and love you, and really cause you to forget all the pain that you've been through. Give the Lord a big hand praise. Now with all heads bowed and all eyes closed, some of you have never given your life to the Lord Jesus. Good time to do that. This is a great time to do it. Part of the relationship that, part of the, 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 the process of becoming a part of the family of God so that you can experience the love of the good, good Father is you need to give your life to Jesus. So if you've never given your life to the Lord Jesus, I want you to repeat after me. Matter of fact, I want everybody to repeat after me. Say, Father God, in the name of Jesus, thank you for loving me. Lord Jesus, I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth that you are the Son of God and that you were raised from the dead. And from this day forward, I'm going to live my life serving you. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. Then there's another group of you. You, at, at one point in time, you did make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, but you know that you have not been living the Christian life the way that you're supposed to. You need to rededicate your life. Just like the father of the prodigal son or the lost son was not angry at him, he was waiting for him, wanting him to come home. God is not mad at you. He just wants you to make it right. He's not walking around talking about, well, all that old dirty thing that went out there. No, no, he, he, he won't even bring it up. The Bible says that he will take yours and my sins. He'll throw it in the sea of forgetfulness. He'll throw it in, and you won't be able to ever touch it or grab hold to it again. Will you rededicate your life? He loves you. So I need everybody to repeat after me. Say, Father God, in the name of Jesus, I choose this day to rededicate my life unto you. Father, I ask forgiveness of every sin that I've committed. And from this day forward, I'm going to do right by you. I'm going to change the people that I be around that I don't need to be around. 
going to find some people that love you, and I'm going to hang out with them. I'm going to trust your word. And I'm going to serve you from this day forward. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, for those of you that are viewing on Facebook or YouTube and those of you that are in the building, if you just made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life for the very first time or if you rededicated your life, I want to tell you that heaven is having a party. They are rejoicing. The Bible says every time a, a sinner or someone who is a non-believer gives their life to the Lord, heaven has a party. So, so we rejoice with you and understand that God has an amazing plan for your life. You don't have to be living in, in a place to where you're always depressed and you're down and out and you don't think things are going to work for you. God loves you right where you are, so, don't, so embrace that love. But decide today that you will not live another day without really totally maximizing the Father's love towards you. Because guess what? The Father still have great plans in store for you. So for those of you that committed your life to the Lord, whether for the first time or rededicated your life, we do have a little booklet here, a little pamphlet. The little pamphlet that says yes. Simply stating that, uh, explaining to you what you need to do or what you need to look out for based on the decision that you made. For those of you that are in the building, one of our uh, ushers or hostesses will be glad to put one of these in your hand. For those of you that are viewing on Facebook, if you gave your life to the Lord Jesus for the very first time or if you rededicated your life, I want you to put in the comment section, that's me, and we would love to reach out to you. A member from our team would love to reach out to you to get one of these pamphlets in your hand. And for those of you that are viewing on Facebook and YouTube, if you need prayer for anything, please let us know uh, in the comment section. Or if you want to give us a private message, do that. One of our team members will reach out to you. We, we would love to pray with you. We'll believe in God for the best for you. So until next week, we're going to encourage you to make this your best week. Love God to the fullest. Make sure you understand your position when it comes to the relationship that you have with the good, good father. Because he loves you unconditionally, and there's absolutely nothing that you can do about it.